What is evergreen revolution? It means increasing the productivity without ecological harm. That is basic concept of sustainable agriculture as well. Dr. M. S. Swaminathan has first introduced this term evergreen revolution and according to Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, the pathway of increasing production and productivity in a manner such that short and long term goal of food production are not mutually antagonistic. How it can be mutually antagonistic? Food production, short term and long term goal. That means short term goal of food production means in present condition how we can achieve the food security. That means we, we need to e explore different resources, resource base. That means we have to use different off-farm resources. We have to use different on-farm resources. We have to uh, optimize the resource base. So this is a short term goal. Long term means long term goal means sustainable agriculture without hampering the uh, ecological aspect or without hampering the biodiversity, without uh, hampering the resource space for the future generation, how we can achieve the food security. So if we explore more and more resource space in present day, then that will be of course antagonistic effect on the future demand or future uh, food security. So according to MS Swaminathan, we, we have to use uh, these resources in such a way and we have to maintain the ecological balance in such a way so that our short term and long term goal it would not be antagonistic what was the green revolution green revolution means we in early 70s what we did we used different high yielding varieties we used different uh, fertilizer more and more fertilizer those high yielding varieties were fertilizer responsive varieties or new resource responsive varieties so we used different resource base and that at that time and uh, our productivity increased after productivity increased we started using more and more fertilizer more and more resource base more and more of farm resource so what happened during that period as we started using more and more resources so the fertility status of the soil it started depleting the parcel factor productivity it started going down there was uh, there was like uh, yield plateau happened earlier so right now there is the problem is yield stagnation multinutrient deficiency there are different disease and infestation disease and pest infestation so these are the major drawback of green revolution time so what how we can achieve uh, evergreen revolution what are the way so mainly uh, that is divided into sustainable agriculture as, as i have already mentioned then rainbow revolution that means uh, we have to concern about all aspect of agriculture not only only crop production but also different aspects like fiber production vegetable production fruit production every aspect we have to integrate then best management practices or climate smart and climate smart agriculture best management best uh, management practice means whatever the combination combination of different crop management practices we need to follow up no we should not depend on only one single practice next thing is climate smart agriculture that means climate is changing and uh, crop is also adapting to this situation but that is slow so we need to mitigate we need to we need to try to mitigate the uh, the climate change and uh, we need to adopt or certain we need to develop certain practices which can have positive impact on our agriculture so that is climate smart agriculture so these uh, three basic i think these three basic aspect will be the way to evergreen revolution then what are the drawbacks for adopting these uh, practices what are the drawbacks we can what are the obstacles we can find in our way first one is capital most of the farmers in india that they are uh, small and marginal farmers that means their land holding is less than one hectare okay marginal farmer land holding is less than one hectare small farmer farmer one to two hectare so most of the farmers they are having land holding less than two hectare more than 85 percent per se so uh, they uh, they are basically poor farmers and they cannot use different modern approaches uh, to uh, to challenge these situations then technology technological advancement uh, is there uh, day and night research in research institute different scientists they are doing uh, their job but the situation is like uh, farmers are not willing to adopt those situations those those uh, technologies because uh, they are acquainted with certain old practices they are acquainted with certain certain old age practice what has been taught to them uh, and uh, like 
20 30 for 20 30 years last 20 30 years they are accustomed to a certain practice so they are there will be uh, some time needed to adopt those new technology but uh, that too we have to uh, go to farmer farmers field and we have to train them uh, or external external extension personnel they have to train them with method demonstration as well as result demonstration then only it can be fruitful then subsidy subsidy in some cases farmers uh, were not availing subs subsidy because they don't uh, know about subsidy system in agriculture uh, so we have to train them of what are the schemes and subsidies available for them uh, we need to train them for that we need to educate uh, of them for that so these are some of the constraints those are the basic uh, basic obstacles in our way then uh, why evergreen revolution is needed as i was mentioning green revolution uh, there are so many negative impact of green revolution in early uh, 1970s uh, what are those negative uh, negative impact basically uh, i was talking about this this high yielding variety we used to achieve the green revolution uh, that those are fertilizer responsive so we started using more and more fertilizer at that period then we started using uh, more and more irrigation so from where we will get irrigation from groundwater so groundwater depletion we are uh, that is a major constraint right now right so these were the these three things were the uh, driver of green revolution which drove to a green revolution era which increased the full uh, full grain production up to a up to uh, so many times but there are certain negative uh, impacts of green revolution using this green revolution technology what are they their multi nutrient deficiency right now we are finding iron deficiency zinc deficiency copper deficiency sulfur deficiency boron deficiency everything in our country then herbicide and pesticide resistance as we are uh, accustomed to monocropping or sole cropping so there are more and more number of pest and disease infestation we can find in our field so to add uh, to address that disease and pest as well as weed in our field we uh, we uh, we just applied a different you know a specific type of uh, group of agrochemical to address this situation but that led us by prolonged application of those group of agrochemicals so that led us to herbicide resistance then insecticide resistance and all then using different fertilizer like nitrous fertilizer so that converts into greenhouse gas uh, from agriculture that that is the contribution of agriculture towards greenhouse gas what are those greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide methane methane as we are cultivating more and more rice crop and rice uh, is being grown in submerged condition and submerged condition methanogenic bacteria is high so methane production is high from rice field and uh, when we are using different uh, nitrous fertilizer or nitrogenous fertilizer that contributes to the nitrous oxide emission and uh, as well uh, we are using different machineries that consumes fuel so from fuel also there are different greenhouse gases and other toxic gases released then soil health is degraded day by day because we are more uh, uh, apply we are uh, more and more applying the chemical fertilizer instead of going for organic fertilizer so uh, these are some of the negative uh, effect or drawbacks of green revolution uh, at the time to address this situation we have to adopt certain uh, certain uh, practices like to address multi nutrient deficiency that is a major problem right now we can adopt uh, we can use bio fertilizers we can incorporate bio fertilizer in our uh, crop management system then inm we should not go for single like inorganic chemical fertilizer application we should go for inm integrated nutrient management which consists of uh, inorganic fertilizer bio fertilizer as well as organic manure so judiciously we have to combine this uh, this uh, different type of nutrient sources and we have to use in our field then ipns integrated plant nutrient system so in ipns ipns what the uh, what happens so we have to analyze the plant we have to look into the plant and this is a uh, coordinated system by which we can take certain decision of on nutrient management for specific crop and for in specific uh, time period then crop residue management we can adopt so by applying crop residue basically the legume residue if you are in, in incorporating in the soil so as they are having less cn ratio so they will uh, decompose faster rate and they are having maximum nutrient content so they can enrich the soil so instead of removing all the resources before plowing or uh, or uh, after plowing uh, 
uh, the stop bells instead of removing them we we need to uh, we need to uh, incorporate them in the soil itself then herbicide resistance management how we can uh, by applying continuous use of different uh, herbicides uh, so there are problem of uh, herbicide resistance like uh, like in our uh, you know uh, like one major incidence was in 1993 uh, it was reported by singh and malik uh, so that was the isoprosodon resist uh, resistance uh, like phalaris minor resistance to isoprosodon so by continuous application of isoprosodon phalaris minor showed resistance to isoprosodon and then we recommended sulfosulfuron that also continuous application of sulfosulfuron uh, resulted in uh, the resistance of cross resistance of uh, phalaris minor to sulfosulfuron so uh, we should not go for single herbicide application uh, year and year so that will cause herbicide resistance so we need to stop that to stop that we need to apply broad spectrum herbicide and broad window herbicide we should uh, apply argivan and sephenor along with herbicide and we can use herbicide resistance crop and we should uh, we should not depends on only one single method of weed control we should go for integrated weed management so these are some of the approaches for soil health management what we can do for soil health management we can choose the cropping based on the land use pattern okay based on the land capability classification we have one to uh, eight land capability classification based on land capability classification and land use pattern we, we we should choose our cropping system then we should go for carbon sequestration how we can sequester the carbon if we are uh, carbon sequestration means trapping the carbon dioxide in the biosphere as well as lithosphere so basically uh, if the there is carbon enrichment in the atmosphere then that is a problem because that is a greenhouse gas so we need to minimize the carbon dioxide concentration we, we need to decrease the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere so how we can do that as plant or biomass that can fix the uh, carbon dioxide in 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 its body so we need to go for more plantation more afforestation so that they can trap the atmospheric carbon dioxide and they can uh, convert it into a biomass uh, then we can incorporate that carbon dioxide and we should not go for residue burning and all so in that way we can uh, sequester the carbon dioxide then soil conservation measure we need to take because top soil as we know top soil is more fertile than subsoil so if we are allowing the soil erosion then uh, there will be a big problem because top soil will be we will lose the top soil so productivity will get will be declined so we need to follow different soil conservation measures then we should adopt conservation agriculture what are the uh, principles of conservation agriculture minimum soil disturbance uh, crop uh, like minimum soil disturbance permanent soil cover and diversified crop rotation so we need to follow these three principles of conservation agriculture for better soil health then a greenhouse gas emission is a major problem from agriculture as well so what we can do to reduce or to mitigate the greenhouse gas emission we can go for sri that is system of rice intensification and aerobic rice cultivation instead of conventional rice production which use less water and from where methane emission will be very less then we can go for integrated nutrient management and iwm integrated weed management instead of single uh, nutrient like application of fertilizer man fertilizer and instead of application of only herbicides then we can go for nitrification inhibitor and slow release nitrogen fertilizer as we know nitrogen is prone to different type of losses like volatilization denitrification leaching so we have to use nitrification inhibitor and the slow release nitrogen fix uh, fertilizer uh, to uh, to prolong the nitrogen use and to increase the nitrogen use efficiency then we can go for conservation agriculture i have uh, already discussed about the principles or uh, principles of conservation agriculture and how it can help the uh, soil health to maintain the soil health so these are some of the adaptive mechanism we can take uh, from our side from farmer side to uh, to make our agriculture sustainable and to reach evergreen revolution